Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines. Today I'm going to show you how to remove a carburetor on a Sears Craftsman 26 inch self propelled snow thrower that has a quiet, quiet technology engine on it. These are China engines, there's a lot of them out there. I'm going to try to zoom in on the model number of this machine just so you know what I'm working on as it might pertain to yours 247.886940. There's a lot of these out there that have the same motor on it. And let me see if I can zoom in on the engine model itself. It's on the right-hand side of your engine underneath the starter. This, this model of this engine is a 270-QU. It's a little bit tricky to see that. Uh, but we're going to be taking apart, or not taking apart, we're going to be taking off the carburetor. I just want to show you how to do that. Let's get to the video. Okay, so I'm going to show you the tools that I use to do this project. Um, a pair of vice grips to pull one of the knobs. A 10 millimeter wrench for some of you that may need it. I use the, the electric ratchet you've seen in the other videos I use. It's a 10 millimeter socket on there. These are my uh, fender clip tools, and I like to use these to take off fuel lines and to take off the uh, knob that we're going to be uh, taking off there. The uh, vice, pair of vice grips. I know you probably shouldn't use vice grips to pinch the fuel lines, but I use the vice grips to pinch the fuel lines, and they work just fine. Uh, a couple new noise pliers and just a regular set of pliers. So we're going to go over to the machine now with uh, these guys here and the vice grips. And we're going to show how we take off a couple pieces here. One is this knob here. This knob here can be really tight. And I've tried many different ways to get it off. But basically the easiest way to take it off is to put a towel around that, which I have right here. Put towel around it. Now get this out of the way first. Gotta put the string on here. It's a good good point to try to put string on your key because if you lose the key, it will shut off and it will not rerun if you're out in the snow and you lose it, you're in trouble. All right, so I'm just gonna clamp down on that and pull that off. Made that look easy, but it's a lot harder because I actually had it set up for the video. So here's your knob and just look how it's set up here. It has a U-shape to it. Okay, and if you look up inside here, you can just follow, it's like a puzzle. So when you put it back on, just make sure that the, it goes together. You can always just look back in the video. Normally the uh, the hole in the top of the, the knob goes up, but also it has a little puzzle right here. Just, it's a U, it goes back onto the shaft itself. So take that off, put that down. That's the hard one to off. And then we have the knob here. You have to kind of pry on this thing at two spots. Now this is where my tool, my special tools come in here handy. And this is where I really need another hand to help me out. But you have to pry evenly on both of these and then this will come out. All right, so I got it off of there. And this doesn't really have a special way it goes on. So just remember that the knob handle faces down when it goes on. Just kind of remember how that is for when you put it back on. All right, so now we want to take off this cover here, and that's a 10 millimeter socket. It's just a little bit easier for me. All right, so we have two screws over here, and before I do that, I like to get this handle out of the way. And all you have to do is pull it down and wrap it around whatever, just to get it out of the way. And when we take this off, it'll be a little bit easier. 10 millimeter there. 10 millimeter there. Come on to the other side. Here. Now this should drop down. It's a little tricky up where the handle is. Just bring this down a little bit. Okay, now be careful when you get to this point so you don't lose your primer. You have a primer hose that's connected to your primer bulb here for your carburetor. And I like to try to 
pull that off. And these can be really stuck on there too sometimes. Pull that off and then you can take this out of your way without disconnecting the electronic on it, the on and off switch. You don't have to disconnect it. You can just push this out of your way. Here's your carburetor right here. So you have two 10 millimeter bolts. First thing you wanna do, one, if you, if you have gasoline in it, this is where I pinch off with a pair of needle nose vice grips. And there are special tools out there that don't have grooves, like the needle nose vice grips have grooves and they put lines in the fuel line. But as long as your fuel line isn't really, really old, it'll come back. Now that's gonna keep the fuel from going all over the place. I'm gonna take off this bracket here is the choke bracket. Two 10 millimeter bolts also holds on the carburetor. Okay, now the fuel primer line is actually connected to the cover here, and that should be, might, might have to take that off, but I'm not sure if you can see inside here. It has a little, if you can get that, but it has a little teeny bracket in there that's connected to here, and you can just pull that out with a bracket. Pull this off. Oh, right, that's the other thing. Um, you want to come around here. This actually has a vent hose on it that's connected to this. So you want to pull the spark plug wire off out of the way. And then you have a clip here. And you can use a pair of pliers or this one just came off actually pretty easily. I usually try to leave the clip over on this side and then push this out because it's going to go through the hole and then this is actually going to come out with it. Okay, so that, that's how it is. So looks like we lost the gasket on that. Remember always, if you can, I mean, you can, sometimes you can use these gaskets. This, this one actually did not, it's got a color on it, but it didn't, didn't come off here. So you might be able to use that gasket again. This gasket isn't as important as the one that's in on the intake side, but yes, they are important to have. Keeps the moisture out. As you saw, there was no air filter on snow throwers and you wonder why, oh, I just ripped it. So we're gonna be replacing that one. All right, so this is a little tricky because remember that the, the choke is here. This is the bracket that comes up and it goes behind the fuel line. So we have to get that fuel line off, but first we're gonna take that bracket down out of the way. But as I was saying, the there is no air filter on snow blowers. And the reason being is that there is no dust when it's snowing. So they thought that why need, why take it out? You know, why put an air filter? on it when you don't need it. Now I'm pulling this carburetor out a little bit so I can get this off because everything is still connected. So right now, remember where this goes. I actually have to sometimes take pictures because I forget, but just remember that it's the way it's sitting. Now this is gonna come right off the end of this. I'm gonna put this down. And I usually take this one off of the carburetor, but we're just gonna set that aside and you have to find pair of pliers to get to this clamp and I'm going to need a pair of needle nose pliers. Sometimes it takes two pliers, one to get up in there. The handle's kind of in the way. You could take the handle off of the machine, but I just work around it. Now I got my needle nose to get it to that point and my regular pliers to work it up out. And another reason why I like these fender tool tools right here is this is how I wiggle and they really work nicely now you just got to be careful there's gonna be fuel coming out of here and may pop off and spray you be careful wear protective clothing put some rags underneath this thing it's gonna if you're working out in the asphalt the gasoline can eat up the asphalt so be careful but you only get a little drip because you got vice grips here put that up out of the way carburetor is still sitting on it and this other gasket looks like it might stay on there. You can take this up out of the way. Just remember where it goes. That's the top of the choke right there. Take that lever out. And then you have two, it's gonna get a flashlight for that so you guys can see this. You have a spring right here that has to come up off the carburetor. And then this lever, the governor lever, Okay, that will actually pop out the top of the carburetor and you may not be able to see that. Um, 
but there is a spot on top that it'll pop up and out of there but when it's in all the way it will not so you have to remember it looks like I just popped off the spring just by playing with it but the spring goes in a little teeny hole right here it's really hard to see that on the video but you'll see it when you're taking it off just remember try not to bend it I mean I bend them by accident sometimes but try not to bend it pull the carburetor out as far as you can and then the lever will pop up and right out of its place so right now we should be able to take the carburetor out so here's the carburetor the reason why I'm pulling this carburetor is we we're either going to replace it or rebuild it depending on what's inside and that could be another day video but this is a video just on how to remove the carburetor on a 26 inch snow thrower Sears Craftsman it's the quiet technology engine and I just wanted to throw it out there for anybody who has one and has problems with the carburetor and uh, we have a lot of problems where we uh, where we are in, on, on the eastern side of the states where we have bad gas because the snow throwers don't get used enough if you like this video please give it a thumbs up thanks for subscribing and please subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys on the next video